an internet communicator, an iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. When you go out to dinner you, and you look around, there are so many people out with their friends and they're all sitting there on their cell phones and not talking to each other anymore. It's not something that we question, whereas when I eat dinner with my parents, I never take my cell phone out. It's a no cell phone policy. And I feel like I would be disrespecting my parents by texting at the table. My name is Jackie Pazinski. I'm a fifth year at Northeastern, and I'm a dual political science and business major. So I'm Lauren, I'm a fifth year senior at Northeastern and a behavioral neuroscience major. My name is Stephanie Wietek, and I am a fourth year student at Northeastern University. I think the first phone that I really remember was the Razor. It was for my 13th birthday. My mom made me do like a scavenger hunt around the house and like the final clue was a phone number to call. And so I called it and that was my cell phone ringing. Our generation tended to not have cell phones until we were around teenager age versus younger generations who might have a cell phone in elementary school. Smartphones has kind of made it almost unacceptable to not be responding. You can't escape or be off the grid. It's just so natural to be checking your phone constantly. You walk down the street and you see most people that walk past you looking down at their phone and it's kind of like, wow, like look up. <laughs> you know, like you don't need to be looking at your phone all the time. I think it's so um, interesting how I spend a vacation where I don't have the ability to use my cell phone versus when you're someplace where you can use it because I feel like a lot of times people um, will be taking pictures of things in order to make other people jealous and it's not so much that you might be taking pictures for you to remember but it's to be like look here I am in this foreign country and I'm living this great life and you should all be jealous of me. It's almost strange now I'll see I'll go to an airport and I'll see like a baby and the parents are like, oh, the baby is bored, it needs something to do, so let's give it an iPad. And babies already know how to like scroll through iPads. It's so weird to me. Probably most frequently I use my phone for texting and emails, but when I'm like, like hanging out, I like to listen to podcasts or music, and I use Instagram and Facebook. I personally, I'm on co-op right now, so I work during the day, and I don't use my phone during the work day typically unless it's my break. I don't even like text people all the time, but I'm always on social media. Well, like Instagram, I'm not really on Facebook and Snapchat as much. Whenever I'm sitting at home, I have my iMessages on my computer, so I'm not really detached from my phone at all. I think our generation in particular has a hard time staying focused on one thing at a time. So I often reach for my phone when I'm in a situation where I feel bored. So I think it's just become a way for people to occupy themselves because society today is so go, go, go. And it's weird to just be sitting around doing nothing. It'll be increasingly more and more important to know how and when to unplug. Because if you're going to use technology like that where you're always connected, it might negatively affect people in a way where they feel like they have no space, no room to breathe. I mean, I wish I could say that I didn't reach for my phone first thing when I wake up, but I definitely do. Anytime I'm eating, I normally grab my phone to like browse something while I eat a meal. And again, as awful as this is, in bed at night before I go to sleep, I normally like browse through my Instagram one more time or something. It's just easy to grab your phone and mindlessly scroll, <laughs> you know? I don't know. We don't know how to interact with one another. We don't know how to find innovative ways to keep ourselves interested in something instead of just reaching for your phone, like play a board game, read a book, right? We don't know how to do that. The first thing that we do is go to the phone or the computer. 
some people don't have any balance between real world and cell phone world, and some people are like perfectly fine with their balance between real world and cell phone world. Okay, a speculation on the future. I think it's going to continue to get easier to use, faster, smaller. There's the possibility for Google Glass becoming more relevant. The phone that you have in your pocket is really just the transmitter for all of the information that's being sent to you. The rise of smartphones is making a lot of other technology obsolete. I think we're all going to have like these virtual reality headsets or something like that where we're walking and a, a picture will pop up and it's a text and we can like scroll through it or something. I don't think that it's wrong that people like to check their phone first thing in the morning. I don't think it's wrong that you prefer to text someone to call. You know, I think that's completely fine. That's a personal preference. But I will say that medically speaking, the way that we look at our screens is going to hurt our necks and backs in the long run. I think our generation will probably push back to it a little bit because we're gonna get to an age where we start saying this is too much change. It's just the historical pattern of things will become older, cranky humans who don't want to deal with the new technology. I think that we're all going to struggle a lot more socially, and that leads to this feeling of loneliness, this feeling of isolation that I think a lot of people feel, which is ironic because we're all so connected to everyone else, but we all feel so alone.